Thursday, September 26, 2013, Town Hall meeting for the Board of Education at the Cleveland County Memorial Library from 6 to 8 p.m. I'm Brendan McGrann, and I'm your uh, mediator, your host for the evening. And thank you all so very much for coming. Here we have five challengers. We have Darius Brandon 
and we have Kenneth Ledford, and we have Don Thurman Jr., we have Danny Blanton, and we have Jeff Gregory. What we're going to do tonight is I want each of them to tell you a little bit about themselves and about uh, why they are on the school board or why they would like to be on the school board. And then we'll have an opportunity to ask questions of them. Now, I want to thank each of you for being on the school board and for having the desire to be on it because it takes so many hours and there's so much responsibility and serving the public can be such a thankless job. And I commend you for giving of yourself to serve because it's a, <coughs> an honorable thing to do, to serve the community. And good luck to all of you. Now, we'll start with Kathy, and then we'll go with Dr. Litton, and then we'll start over here. And give you a chance if you want to come to the podium and um, just tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're on the board. Well, typically, um, I come up here and I'm a nervous wreck when I'm looking at people, but I'm kind of looking at things a little bit differently now. Um, I am Kathy Falls, and I am married, and I have been married to my husband, Jeff, for 28 years. And um, together we have three sons. I have a 7th grader, and I have an 11th grader, and then I have one that's uh, in his second year in college. And um, why am I on the school board and why I chose to run? I'm, I've, I've served for four years. is because I have children in the school system. And when I ran the first time, uh, if I had a problem and I would call the school board member, I would go down the list and I would talk to man after man after man after man after man after man. After man. And I said, you know what? I need to talk to a mama. I, I said, I need to hear a lady's voice on that other end of the phone that understands what problems I have. When I call, I, you know, I just needed to talk to a mama so <coughs> she would sympathize with me. And um, I, I love the people that I serve with, and I think everyone's compassionate, and everybody is there for the same reason that they love children. But we only have two females on our board right now out of nine, and I think there's a lot of ways that you can me measure diversity, and I think having a female or two females is true. <coughs> we need that. Um, I serve on many committees, and uh, one thing Ms. LeGrand said is I think that uh, I didn't realize when I ran for school board the time that it does take, but it is a lot of time. Um, it is a big commitment. We do school visits, and we, uh, we interact with the kids, and you know we see how you know, technology helps in the classrooms. And I think those are important things that we need to know uh, what is going on. Um, um, I'm always available. If you email me or you give me a telephone call, I will be the school board member that will send that email back to you. I will respond. Uh, and uh, I just appreciate uh, your support on November 5th because I think our kids continue uh, will continue to need to know what uh, a mother thinks on the Board of Education. Uh, and that's why I'm running, just for the children. I have no agenda. Thank you. Well, I can't tell too much that's wrong because I have some of my former students out here in the audience, and uh, I won't tell if you all don't. Over a number of years, I have uh, devoted my efforts to young people and to our community. I believe that I understand the, the educational process. My experience has included both school-based experience and, uh, as Mr. Grant and I were talking a while ago, yes, I have been on the board for a while. As a principal, uh, we were fortunate enough uh, to be designated uh, United States Department of Education National School of Excellence. I'm familiar with the dynamics of working with teachers, uh, working with students, 
and attempting to get everyone together to reach some goals. On the school board level, I've attempted to set an example of dedicated leadership. I have earned the highest recognition of, of, tra of training offered by the school board association. I believe in both effective and efficient operations. The North Carolina School Board Association named me as their school board member of the year in 2010. I've had an opportunity to observe the State Board of Education and their workings, sitting on their advisory board. I've also had an opportunity across the state to see other boards of education and other school systems and how they operate. I've always tried to represent the interests of a quality education for our students. Now to do that, you've got to work in close cooperation with the other governmental boards, the county commissioners, that's, that's important. The cities and towns and their, their governmental agencies, that's important. Uh, I believe in our community. Uh, I've enjoyed working with the United Way for a number of years. Twice I've chaired their board, twice I've served as the campaign chairman. Um, I, I believe in the United Way because it helps our citizens that have the most needs. I hope to always be an advocate for our students. I'm currently serving as the president of the Educational Foundation, and we try to do those things over and above the, uh, what the school system can do. My family's been members of Poplar Springs Baptist Church for more than 35 years, where I've served as uh, deacon chair and other positions of leadership. Uh, I proudly served uh, our military. I'm a veteran of the US, United States Army, and uh, my wife and I raised two sons, and we currently have one grandson in the Cleveland County Schools. And I ask for your vote.
I'm dedicated to working in this community. I'm a deacon in this community. I'm also a youth Sunday school teacher in this community. I know what it takes to bring people together to solve problems, because that's what we need. We need an inclusive environment where everybody's voices get heard, and they're coming together in unity as a community to bring forth changes that we need in the school system. Now, my slogan says, better schools today for stronger leaders tomorrow. We have a good system here. We have a good system. But can we have a better system? Can we have a best system? Can we have a system that every other county comes and tries to model itself after? I believe we can. And I believe with my leadership, with my blend of traditional values, with my blend of leadership skills, with my blend of modern day technology, that I can be a candidate that's sitting on the Board of Education that brings another level of diversity another level of thought process to help make our school system better and the best. Therefore, I ask for your vote on November 5th. Um, for more information, you can always check my website. <laughs> but I ask for your vote uh, for Griffin for Education on November 5th. Thank you. My name is Kenneth Lefferman. Grew up in just about as far north of the county as you can go, Kayser. I attended Kayser Elementary School, and then the schools at that particular time merged. We had two high schools in the upper end of the county. It was called Burns of Foster and Burns of Pope. I attended Burns of Pope and graduated from there, and then went on to Gardner Webb and went on to Western Carolina. From there, Uncle Sam decided he wanted to be more important than my, my education. So I served two years in the Army, serving one year in Vietnam. Uh, I am a disabled veteran. I hold no grudge against that. I can serve my country anytime. I have served in many capacities, but I'm not going to try to bore you with all these things. I guess some of the most important ones that, that I have done is to start the water system or help start the water system in Upper End of Cleveland County. It was very important because all the water at that particular time had, had iron in it. So something had to be done. That's whenever the Chamber of Commerce, a, few, a group of few men, decided that yes, it's time that we do something. And that's whenever we started that water system. I've also, I'm also a member of Pueblo Baptist Church. I've been a member there for over 30 years. I've been a school teacher. I've been a and I continue to serve my church to the best of my ability. I do believe in God, and I, I hold to those beliefs, and I still believe that we should have prayer in school. I have no, no options against that. The reason I'm running for a Board of Education is very simply that I do have an agenda. That agenda is to make sure that our students have the best possible education that they can get. All students are important. No matter where you go, no matter where you live, that student that attends that school is very important. The Board of Education needs to see that we are able to give that student, through the superintendent, through the teachers, through the principals, all the way down through the custodian, you don't leave anybody out. Everybody is important when it comes to education. When it comes to doing a job, you're all a team. We have got to continue to make sure that those students are prepared whenever they leave the school system, when they graduate. No matter where they go, whether it's out on the job, whether it's to a college or a university, or whether it's to serve in the military. It takes an education no matter what you do. We see new companies come in. My, business, my uh, profession has been human resources for over 30 years in different companies, different uh, uh, types of companies. And I see the type of student that comes out of the Cleveland County School System. I have hired a bunch of students. And let me tell you folks, those students were just as well and sometimes better than students from other systems. I work in Cleveland County, I work in Rutherford County, I've worked in South Carolina, and I've seen students from everywhere. <coughs> and our students are just as 
well prepared as any other. When a new company comes into an area, they look for certain types of qualifications. A lot of times our students don't have those qualifications because it's a particular type of an industry. They have to be trained. Wherever you go, that person has to be retrained. So my, my responsibility as a board member is to make sure that we've got a superintendent that wants to have the best education and does give the best education to our students. I ask for your vote on November the, on November the 10th, and thank you very much for your support. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is my pleasure to stand before you on tonight. Thank you, Mr. Brand, for this opportunity and putting this forum together. And thank you all for being here and showing your concern about education. I'll never forget um, in kindergarten when I walked into that little classroom, I walked in with, the, with my head hanging down because I was a little boy with low self-confidence. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a child before who has low self-confidence, but picture me as a little boy, and um, that was me. But I'll never forget a lady named Lynn Hamrick, who's in hospice right now. Lynn Hamrick um, was my kindergarten teacher. She changed my life because she looked at me and she told me, I always keep my head up. You can be anything that you want to be. You can do anything that you want to do. That boy with no um, self-confidence actually became an all-state football player. Actually graduated with a 4.3 GPA. <coughs> actually went all around the country to become a professional motivational speaker. And you know where it started? It started right in the classroom. Why am I running for the Cleveland County Board of Education? Because I am a proud Cleveland County <coughs> school. I'm no doubt the youngest candidate running. And people have told me, how in the world do you think that you're going to get elected? But I'm a dreamer. I believe in possibilities. I believe that when you have a passion, and when you have the effort, and even when you have the experience, you can get things done. Um, for the past three years, I worked at Crest High School as a graduation coach. I worked directly with children who were thinking about dropping out of high school. I fought for them on a daily basis, and not only with them, I had to fight with their families. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what it takes to keep a child in school, and it needs to be a board who understands direct touch and direct connection. It doesn't do enough just to make decisions and not be directly connected with your community. You can count on me being a person who will be in touch with each and every one of you. This group, this group of people who came out on a Thursday night is no doubt concerned about education. And you are the people who we need in our corner. We need to engage our communities more, which is why I do have a plan. I have a five-pillar platform that I have adopted. The first thing that I want to do is connect our communities with our schools. I'm the mentoring services coordinator, and I do believe we need more mentors in our schools. We need to collaborate and do this together. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm tired of asking our teachers to do things that should be done at home. We need stronger families in order to build stronger schools. Ms. Glader, I know you talked for a long time, and you knew that in order for a child to be effective, they had to have some positive backing at home. That's what I want to see more. We must connect more with our faith-based organizations. I'm a youth pastor at my church, and I understand the importance of our Christianity and our faith. And our churches, we must connect our churches with our communities. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what we must do in our school system, we must keep pushing forward and connect. The next thing we must do is inspire. Now, I do believe inspiration is important because if you walk from school to school like I have and you connect with people like I'm sure every one of us has, you'll see teachers with a low morale. Their heads are hanging down, and they wonder why in the world did we get into this profession anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, we must remind them that what you do is a precious value. We can't keep giving them more requirements and not giving them appreciation. We have to appreciate our teachers. I remember a day when our teachers were appreciated and held as heroes. I want to get back to those days, and I think the board can really illustrate that. The next thing I want to do is equip our teachers. We can't keep asking them to do a job to a higher level when we don't give them the support they need. We must equip them with what they need, and not only our teachers, but our students. We must put things where they need to be. Our budget should indicate the way that we support our teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what I'm here to do. We need to equip them to be what they need to be. We must also evolve our methods of teaching. I know that we know that evolution is important, and as one of our candidates talked about earlier, technology is an important thing. We must evolve the way that we teach our children while remaining true that our teachers are important. We must 
help our teachers to understand that when they walk in the classroom, we just can't throw money at the problem. We must train our teachers on how to use the technology. What good is a smart board if I don't know how to use it? We must make sure that training is in there. Last but not least, we must eliminate bullying. Bullying has been a problem in our schools for a long time, and some people would shake their heads at me and say that bullying is not a problem, but I beg to differ with you. In the seventh grade, I wiped blood off of my nose in the bathroom after being hit by somebody, so if people shake their heads at me, I don't mind that, because I know what it feels like to be that little boy who was looked down upon, and I know what it's like to be an adult who advocates for those children who don't have a voice. I want to be a voice for the voices. And on November the 5th, I hope that you remember not only my big head on the sign, but I hope that you remember my name. My name is Donnie Thurman, Jr., and I'm honored not only to be a product of Cleveland County Schools, I want to serve and I want to be elected as a school board member. Not just to be elected, but to serve you all as members of our community. Thank you for your time. have not been forgotten. Some of those raises that go to this administration should go to those teachers that's got very little. Because our teachers is the ones that's responsible for our children for the future. I, I've, I've been a maintenance man and a construction man. Uh, I know, maybe not in the technology, I do not know a lot about it. But when it comes to building and the construction end and the spending, I believe I can help you taxpayers and I will stay on top of how our money is spent. It's wrong and it's going to be progressive and it's going to be brought. I will listen to problems. I'm a phone call away anytime before I get elected. If I don't get elected, after I get elected, I have searched, searched, and searched. If I don't have an answer, I will get an answer. If I don't know an answer, I'll find out the answer. I will be working for the Cleveland County taxpayers full, 100%. <coughs> I might be standing on my own sometimes. I might have a I will stand for our children in Cleveland County. I have five grandchildren, four of them in school. I have three teachers, daughter, son, and a wife. Our teachers and our teachers' assistants is a very crucial thing for our children for tomorrow. And we need to stick on our basics. We need to our writing, arithmetic, and math, I know this country is going to technology, but we need to learn how to make change for a dollar. Because that dollar will make two dollars. One percent of a hundred thousand is one thousand. I had a teacher of Miss Jewel Lane in the fourth grade, and she said I would not go to the fifth grade if I didn't learn my multiplication. I learned. Folks, remember me November the 5th, but better yet, October the 17th, early voting starts and goes through November the 2nd. And I'll be standing there waiting on y'all to come by and vote. I appreciate every vote. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Gregory, and uh, I'm a native of Cleveland County. 
I um, I've had a sort of eventful life. I think that uh, I've enjoyed my whole my whole career of my life. I um, started out living in the mill village in Kings Mountain, working hard with my 16 year old full time, working at Hamble Midware while I was in high school. From there I left and uh, went to the military, served the military, certified for first space shuttle recovery team at White Sands, New Mexico. Uh, decorated veteran, served in Okinawa. Uh, came home and worked for an airline called Piedmont. Some of y'all may not remember it, but it was a great airline. I left it and went to work for the U.S. Postal Service and uh, served as a postmaster for many years in different counties, from Pisgah Forest to uh, Spruce Pine, Rondale, uh, working in Gastonia, Shelby, and all around. So uh, I've had a career and I've really enjoyed it. Uh, again, I said I said I served in the military, uh, but one of the greatest things right now that uh, it is on my heart. My son, he's getting ready to go into November 19th as an officer cannon pro in the United States Army. We'll be leaving. I ask for your prayers. Matter of fact, he just walked in back there. He's out working today with the recruits. So, uh, he didn't get mad because I said that. I'm proud of him. So, I got that out of the way. But anyway, what's school board all about? Basically, it's about family. It's about keeping children safe. Most important thing in anything is keeping children safe. Uh, if you send children to school, can't protect yourself. We send them at the mercy of, of whatever comes their way. We want to make sure that they're safe, the teachers are safe, the administration is safe. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's got to be issues somewhere when we was in school, they didn't have to listen to me in school. So it's good that, that we can do that, but we also got to look at why do we have to put them in there. The other thing is educate the children properly. I think we've got a clear from that. We're looking at a lot of things like uh, what's the U.S. Department of Education want and different things like that. We need to look at, look at the local areas and, and what we need. And, uh, and we don't need to throw a blanket over the whole program. We need to look at what, what's good for our area. We've got to make sure we love our children. We need to make sure we support our parents and our teachers. I think sometimes they feel like we're not, they're not getting support they need. Because the teachers feel like we're not recognizing them. The parents uh, think we're not recognizing them, their concerns. But it's got to be together. We've got to work together. The teachers got to know that the parents uh, that need to be brought in. And also the parents got to realize that they give their kid, their kid every day to, to someone to teach them. We have to recognize them and teach them what we can do. Uh, we're going to look at Common Core, people. If nobody's looked up Common Core, please look it up. Research it and see what's going on. Uh, there's so many things that, that, that you're going to look at, like home invasion, uh, could be possible. Uh, look, take a look at parental rights. Uh, and, and someone talked earlier about putting the, the, the families in there. Well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to take the family structure away. If you take the family structure away, then you can pretty much get people to do the same things that you got them to do. And, and we don't want that. Family is very important. important. That's what this country is, is, is families work together through their religious beliefs and, and their home structures. We want to make sure we keep the uh, uh, wrong, wrongful negative influence away from our children. They have enough of that in life. We need to make sure in school they don't get that. Uh, look at the fiscal responsibility to the taxpayer. This is very important. People pay money, uh, give their hard earned uh, money, uh, taxes, and we can make sure that we're a good stewards of the money. Um, everybody thinks that the idea is, is spending money. And what else you do when you run out of money? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was PTO president in East School years ago, they changed the, the zone <coughs> and our kids started going to East School. Well, uh, it was sort of a deprived area. And uh, we got the community together, raised a lot of money. And John Gunther was the principal that year. And I, I'll never forget, he had to come knock on my door. He said, Jeff, will you and your family get involved? He said, I think you can help the community. Well, we got involved and made it a great school and raised a lot of money for it. And actually, I think that's one thing helped him get promoted. But he may not say that, but I think so. The other thing is, is well, we had a playground. It, it was dilapidated. So what we're going to do, we didn't have any money. Playground for the equipment, didn't have any. So we raised enough money to buy playground equipment. So what do we do? We sat there and brainstormed and came up with an idea. Kings Mountain had a National Guard. We contacted them. They come with the big earth movers, put French trains in the ball field, put up the playground equipment, and it cost us a dime. So we use things around them other than money. You can sit down and say, well, what kind of resources do we have? And, and, and sometimes you have people who, who, who lay brick or different things, and they understand the problems, and they'll help you out. So you know, sometimes we can go a different direction. Bullying in schools. Everybody knows it's a big deal. Who wants to go to school and, and worry about uh, uh, get picked on, or, or, or it's not always physically, it's mentally. Uh, and a lot of times, it's just it's the smart kids. They get picked on because they're smart. Well, I spoke a lot of different schools. I and I spoke even like at some of the charter schools, Thomas Jefferson, and different things. And one thing I noticed, I believe in public schools, but they don't have to put up the riffraff. And what I mean by that is, people come to those schools want to be educated. We want people to come to our school to be educated. If you don't want to be a part of the education. I don't do everything I can to get you in there. There comes a point where you're, you're bothering other people to be educated. What do you look at? Getting you away from the people so they get educated. Let society deal with you because they're going to eventually deal with you anyway. But one child left behind, I understand that. But there's a point there where you got to look at the people who really want to get educated. Uh, drugs in school. How long has that been a problem? <coughs> it's 
should be zero tolerance. There's, there's, no, there's no issue there. Uh, we have a policeman there. Uh, one of my plans would be to sit down with Alan Holman and the local police and ask him what can they do to help us in the school system. Superintendent needs to be responsible to the board. The board needs to be responsible to the people. That's a very plain concept. It goes back to the beginning of America, the beginning of the Constitution, what the people, what the people uh, uh, deserve. It's not sitting like Pharisees and Sadducees, sitting there looking at all the people saying, we don't want any questions, we're not going to answer to you, please don't come. We want to make sure that people know we work for them. We don't want to be above people. There's no elite people. Everybody's a taxpayer. People say, well, what makes you qualified? Well, first of all, I live in Cleveland County. And anybody in Cleveland County, I encourage them to run for office. We want to give you the good service and get involved. It's about the future of Cleveland County, North Carolina, and America. It's about telling our children it's okay to say, say the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag, it's okay to be proud to be American. It's about teaching our, our, our children. The Constitution is the law for man. It all starts in school. There's a lot of things that, uh, that you look at, and uh, I'll give you an example. How far do I believe in representation? Well, when I was postmaster, there was a, a law called the Hatch Act. You could not uh, run for office, federal office. So I thought, how can I get involved? Well, I got so frustrated. Frustrated with a senator called John Edwards. Yeah, well, I know what's happened to you. He hadn't been in office very long. My son, too. I got so frustrated, money was tight, had kids in school. I jumped on a Greyhound bus, went to Washington, D.C., knocked on his door, and he said, I'm going to speak. And they said, Well, he doesn't have time. I said, Well, I'll stay here tonight and do his speech. So I spoke with him on issues I thought, as far as the school, things going on in the country. Again, uh, I just believe representation should be available for the people. Technology is great. We need to go forward with it. We also can't forget about uh, technical and vocational skills. Uh, I think we've learned that uh, a lot of companies need that. We've been there for a while, it's all about uh, technology and, and, uh, and computers, and that's great, again. But everybody can't be rocket scientists and, and, and teachers. Or some people say, we want to be laborers. Uh, and one thing people keep saying is the Department of Education being the federal system. United States Department of Education. If you think the United States Department of Education brings in, recognizes, or approves, I don't think it's a good thing. I think it needs to be local. I want to give it a state. I have no problem pushing up with the state legislation on issues you people come up and have concerns about, or, or my family. Uh, I still have a lot of family living in Phoenix Mountain, in Shelby. I live in uh, a new house area. I have a little farm. Uh, my daughter keeps horses out there. I believe in family. I believe in God Almighty. And I believe in you. I ask for your support and your love.
least by a quarter of eight, maybe a little before, so that they have an opportunity to visit with you all and interview and speak to anybody that they would like to. So now, what I'm going to do is if you will raise your hand, I'll call on you, and you can ask a question. And if you have two people that you want to answer that, sometimes that makes a difference. Uh, we'll um, try to do that and see how we come along. Go ahead. I see you're getting up and down, so I know. Go ahead, sir. Sorry, I haven't noticed it. Do you want to come up here or you want to just speak loud? Well, I'm not going to make you all get up. We don't have a PA system, but I think we're going to speak it up. My question is for the incumbents, uh, both of them, as a matter of fact. And uh, I, I realize that some of the decisions and, and that you have to do throughout the year, uh, a lot of it is very mundane. You know, he's crossing up teeth and dotting the eyes and making sure everything's right, you know, and it's, it's uh, administrative in a kind of way, uh, guiding the policy, et cetera. But every once in a while, you'll need to run across something that really stirs your passion. Something that's like a decision, you're really glad you were on that board, and something you did that you were just like, oh, this right here was the, like the, 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 you know, the cap of your career. You know, so I want to ask, what was the issue that, that really gave you the most satisfaction of the decision that you made uh, on a particular topic, and, and how did it come out, and why did it, was that one thing so important to you? Now, that for putting on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> The job is full of decisions and choices. About six years ago, we had a strategic planning team that mainly consisted of citizens in the county that met and presented to the board their ideas on where we should be going and what we should be doing. We as a board tried to use that strategic plan so that we weren't going willy-nilly here, willy-nilly there, piecemeal here, piecemeal there, and stay with that plan. We've pretty well done that. Just Monday night, we had the strategic plan groups came together again. They've been meeting for months and presented to us a new strategic plan to lead us into the future. Now, of course, facilities is big in there. <coughs> that, that is one of the things. But, but 21st century leadership, and what are you going to do with curriculum? What are you going to do in, uh, in working with your, your leadership and your teachers? I think the biggest satisfaction that I had was having a plan and then trying your best to follow that plan, taking the available resources that you have. School boards can't tax. We have no taxing authority. We're dependent upon our commissioners who believe in education and our young people. And we're dependent upon the state of North Carolina. We do get some federal funds and some grants, but the greatest satisfaction I got was having a plan and going with that plan. Well, thank Dr. Lindsay for going first because I needed some time to think about it. The strategic plan that the board had was in place before I came on the board four years ago. And uh, children are my passion, and uh, since I had just a moment to think about it, I would have to say uh, my proudest moment in four years was seeing uh, the students at Shelby Middle School uh, move from their old facility into a state-of-the-art class, first-class facility that they can be proud of because Shelby just deserved that. They, they deserve a new facility and to kind of Ride on Dr. Lipton's back Monday night. The new facility, the, the facilities, and we each board member got to nominate some people to be on different uh, committees of that. 
And uh, the new plan is very uh, innovative. They, they recommended, uh, and it's just recommendations. It's not, there was not one board member that served on the strategic uh, plan, but uh, they recommended uh, looking at uh, North Shelby, and they also recommended uh, a new wings at Shelby High School and Autumn, I mean, uh, Burns High School and Crest High School and auditoriums. Both of those areas totally deserve an auditorium just like the others. Now, paying for it, there again, we need funding, but uh, those are important things, and uh, I'm proud of the new school. Uh, I think the kids there are proud of the new school, and I think that it's let them hold their heads up high and show me that they've got something that they can be proud of. So I guess that would be my proudest. Mr. Gregory and Mr. Thurman, um, what is what are your thoughts? Um, I kind of heard you say some things about bullying. Bullying is a big issue here in Cleveland County, and I was kind of disturbed actually to hear you say, Mr. Gregory, do you think that we should just take our kids if they're bullies and just basically put them out, or do you think we should actually take the time and educate our children and give them a chance to evolve and make absolutely good citizens in our community? Yeah, I have a problem there. When I said take them out, I'm talking about take them out of that situation where the bully needs to be. So these people can have education too. We just, we just need to put them in a different classroom, or we need to put them in another uh, type of school or whatever. The thing is, we can't let these people say, oh, it's okay to keep bullying these people. These people, the other people deserve education too. So, there are, so if there are people bullying, again, if it's my child, then I'd be upset because they're bullying them. Others, like I said, there's other ways to educate these people. If they're constantly bullying, then guess what? These, nobody's going to be educated. So we have to look at different ways to do it. You just can't keep all the structure together. Or this bully, they're not going to get educated. And the child said over here just don't want to be bullied about the education. What do you accomplish? Well, do you feel that Cleveland County should take its board of education and say that they need to not only have a bullying task force, which I myself and, and Sam Davis are a part of, and, and make it a point to say there is some funding available um, to not only allow us just one week a year from October 7th through the 11th, to have anti-bullying week, do you think that there should be funds set aside? I do. I don't know exactly the quality of it. We have to look at that and see what the budget is. But yes, whatever the, the avenue is, again, to stop bullying, it needs to be stopped. Whether, again, if, if you bully too much and you physically hurt someone, that may be prosecution. I'm just saying there's okay. a point where you cannot let other kids suffer because somebody wants to be a bully. Okay, again, if that, if that child gets older and we don't correct it at this point and just let it keep going on, then society's going to take care. How do you feel, Mr. Thurman? Well, um, thank you for your question, Mr. Thurman. Thank you for your efforts. Um, they, they do a lot with <coughs> against bullying, and I think that they are great resources. And one thing we need to do is bring people like that to the table and understand this is a community effort. Um, you can't address bullying just by punishing a kid, right? Absolutely. One thing we have to do is we have to educate even the child that's doing it. It's a big issue, but what we get, it starts in elementary. It starts on the low level, helping kids to understand the seriousness of their work, um, helping kids, even the ones who um, are getting bullied, help them to understand self-esteem. The biggest um, supporter, the person that helped me the most, is sitting right in this room, my mother. When I got bullied, she said, some things, son, you need to let go in one ear and out the other. She helped me a lot because what she instilled in me was having self-confidence. Some kids don't have parents at home like that. So what we need to do is collectively, as a community, come together and help those kids who don't have a voice and instill confidence in them, not just, not just at a high school level, but starting at an elementary school level. As soon as they come in, we need to have programs in place to address that. Thanks Absolutely. for your How do you feel, Ms. Falk and Ms. Littleton? How do you feel uh, <coughs> as far as being on the board and knowing the things that we talked about prior, prior to this, and how do you feel that things can be changed and different? <coughs> for some reason, I'm just feeling that I'm coming here.
If you have to go to the teacher every day, if you have to go to the guidance counselor every day, don't come home and tell me that you were bullied. Go tell them before you walk in the door. And uh, I think the kids that are bullied have to make sure that they feel comfortable in going to tell the person, if it is 10 times a day, that they have to do that and they have to know that there is somebody there to help them. And I am totally opposed to bullying because I, I dealt with that. I, you know, it breaks my heart. And I know that there's bullies out there, but I don't think you throw those kids out of school because then they're going to be a problem in the community. So we still have to educate all the children no matter what. Uh, and we can't just, you know, being the mom, I mean, I'm, I want to mother all the children, uh, and, and it is going to take a community. But uh, at the same time, there is still, we're going to have to deal with the churches because we do have parents that are not going to take and so we have to care. We have to. We have to reach out to all of them. Uh, I don't know that I've answered your question, but I can tell you that I sympathize. Yeah. And I've got my little boy now is in seventh grade, and, and I've held my breath because I know that bullying is. I do think we start early. I think that you have to start in kindergarten to tell them that this is not acceptable, because by the time they get to the middle school, they've already. It's already instilled in what the character they're going to have. So I have been very pleased that I've got a child that's been in school for a month now and in the middle school setting, and it's been a great year, and he talks, you know, nothing about bullying, but I was afraid at that, you know, age. But I, I'm pleased with your task force, and I want you to, you know, continue on and keep pushing, and I'm proud of you. Uh, and I hope that, that you're proud of us that we're trying. I hope you know that we as a board are trying our best to address it in every way that we can. We do. That's why we, we think it's important to to look at the other camp, the incumbent, the candidates that are trying to come in to make sure that they can actually fit in with the ones who are already there who know what we're trying to, to, to accomplish. Absolutely. Right. And I, I, again, I, I could stand here all day, and what you're going to hear me say is I am the parent of three children. And two of them are still in the school system, and and, and that's and I and I sympathize and I understand that, and that's all. I, I cannot tell you that there's not going to be bullying, but I can say that I hope that there's not, and that we can do something about it. Now, how is it handled when the child in kindergarten complains to the teacher? How is it handled from that that point on? I have a great niece who's bullied in kindergarten. She complains to the teacher. The teacher tells her. Stop having. She complains again. Stop having. What happens from that point on? Well, I, I'll say that we have uh, every we have a uh, code of conduct that outlines what the plan is for bullying or any other violation that they have in, in the school, wherever it is, should be following those and. It is a very simple, I mean, it's very simple, it's very easy. I can't, if you have a problem and you call me, I will direct to see, I mean, this is the way I work as a school board member that things are, but you know, I can't talk about your student here, or your, you know, but there is a question is, is, where does it go if the child can't, if the child is told at home, the mom says, look, you need to tell your teacher. The child tells the teacher, the teacher, more or less tells her, go away. And that Where shouldn't be that happening because we have a, we, we, we have, well, there's a code and they, they are supposed to follow those guidelines. That's, that's the policy. So the mother goes to the teacher, the mother goes to the principal, the mother goes, where does the mother go from that? I just, what I would recommend, if they do not feel like they're getting satisfaction, then I feel like that at that point, that's the time that they need to call me so that I can see as a board member, because I mean, we can't micromanage every school, but I can help any parent that I that calls me, and I, that's why my phone number's out there, and I will talk to any parent. I, I'm readily available. I can't. I mean, I can say that we have a we have a good <coughs> conduct, and it's and it's out there for the for the students and for the parents and for the teachers and principals and all up to follow. If they're not following that, then I feel like that's where my job is for you to call me so that I can. Help. Does that answer your question? Dr. Clinton, I, I think that you were back on that. Well, Ms. Falls, I thought, 
gave a good answer. And uh, we appreciate our task force, and it will be listened to. But, folks, this is not a Cleveland County Schools problem, nor is it an individual school problem. This is a national problem right now. People are dealing with it. I dealt with it as a principal. Uh, I know how it is. I parent when my children were going to school, and I got a grandson there. You deal with it. And uh, I, th I think certainly it ought to be handled at that lowest level that it possibly can in the classroom. If not, then that's when the administration at the school should be involved. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. I'm Lars Henson, and I was disturbed tonight talking to an existing board member and at least one of the candidates up here that they weren't even aware of the history of Common Core. Every parent has, has for their children the obligation to look at stopcommoncorenc.com. They also have the responsibility to go to commoncore.com, and it's the only website in America that has no phone number, no contact information. Common Core came from Bill Ayers, a professor who was a terrorist with the Weatherman Underground who bombed the Pentagon and bombed the New York police station. Our board members actually said, uh, uh, believe that it's a state-mandated program. No, it was extortion by withholding federal funds for all the schools in America. Within the next month or two, they're going to issue computers to all the students, cameras inside, outside. You have no control over whether that cat the microphone and all that works in your home or not. No student will take the same test. The teacher is going to be out of the equation as far as what the uh, test of, uh, kids take. The school board don't even know anything about this, where this topic was. Jeff Gregory, Dan Watt, and Point uh, Donnie are the only ones that express any knowledge of how common the word is. It's rotten to the core. Think of Adolf Hitler, think of Hitler you. That's what common core is about. Please research it and see the truth before your kids are tattling on you. Teachers have to sign up to a seven-page non-disclosure agreement on this, not to talk to the parents. And you want to talk about bullying? You go to the city council, you go to the, uh, the school boards, and you speak up against Common Core, you will be arrested and escorted out. I urge you to go to YouTube, look at the media last week, and the number of people that have been arrested for speaking against uh, an insidious program that was snuck in. People believe it's, it's, it was instituted by boards. They believe it was instituted by states. They believe it was instituted by the federal government. But Common Core is a private company. George Washington is not a terrorist, as the New Testament. He was the founding father and first president of the United States. That's the answer. Three times, look at this one. Three times four equals 11 is OK under Common Core. You want your children to be that ignorant and to be propagandized to the point where they think that Nazi Germany is a great thing? No. It's to be educated, not indoctrinated. Kids are not just little robots that would be told what to do. And testing should be, if you're going to have testing, they say all the kids in the classroom should have the same test. But tell me that you can have a, an agenda on, on a website if you change it any time, that's a good thing. It's not. Well, I'm going to go by the board and then attempt to stop First of all, I think you're ahead. The Common Core was developed by the governor. No, uh, it was not. No, it was not. No, no, you're not no, interrupting. No, I didn't interrupt you. That's what happens every time somebody comes to meetings. Right. Everybody's silent. We come to a school board meeting and you're up on the dais and you sit down. And if you look at the people speaking at all, it's with, with, without deference or consideration of them. I went to a meeting to observe that for myself. And there's an arrogance on the boards, there's an arrogance in that administration that people can't get past. And so the parents are really frustrated. We, Excuse me, I'm, I'm we, sorry. We'd be more than happy for people to come and address the board. We have that every time that we meet. Okay? It is three minutes. It is short. But we're there for business. And we do have a number of task force where people can go in and work on it. But that's where Common Core was developed. 
It was not. And that, okay, but you've interrupted me again, and I didn't interrupt you, okay? Okay, from there, it has been advocated by the Department of Education. It has been adopted by the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Now, we're going to have a curriculum. One way or another, a curriculum is going to be there. There, we have a standard course of study in North Carolina. How you work with a standard course of study and how you work with Common Core if it comes will be decided at the local level. Um, I've never heard some of the things that the gentleman said tonight. I've, I've never heard those before. I have researched a lot of Common Core. I've also researched the, uh, the, the core knowledge curriculum. If any of you have ever heard of that. The core knowledge curriculum is a national standard for charter schools. Okay? Common Core has two, language arts and math. Core knowledge curriculum has six. I'm not sure which one's best or worst. But you're going to have a curriculum to work with. In North Carolina, you don't have a choice of whether to go with anything other than what the Department of Public Instruction, through our legislature, tells us to use. We have to take it to them. Now, having said that, the National Board of Governors is not actually the governor of the state. It's the Board of Governors that were put together through Bill Gates and millions of dollars. So you need to research that and realize there's five states that did not opt to do the Common Core. Virginia, Minnesota, and Texas, and so forth. So you do need to look at it. And it is an evil uh, toward the children and toward later home invasion. You need to really go to the core of it. It's who done it. Again, the state has adopted it because they gave them $400 million to adopt it. So we need to look at it and talk to the legislature. And that's what I plan to do once I'm elected. Thank you. I'm, I think that this is, uh, this is what we're here about. Liking how this is, how everybody has an opportunity to just stay and join in. And, um, Lou, you have a question? This is just a follow up on something Ms. Falls addressed earlier. It's very different from what we're talking about. You mentioned that, uh, of course, Kings Mountain High School and Shelby High School have fine auditoriums, and the new Shelby Middle School does, but Burns and Press still have small facilities. This has apparently been brought to the attention of the school board. Uh, for both environments, uh, are there any direct plans to enlarge this and increase the role of the performing arts in the schools? I guess that'll be for, uh, for Dr. Linton and myself. What I, I, funding is always an issue, but what I guess I will say is, Dr. Linton, if you will help me, I, I, I'm gonna, was there about a hundred plus uh, members of the strategic plan on the Probably about 125 across the there was six different teams from uh, curriculum uh, global uh, community uh, 21st century learning I'm not going to be able to name all of them facilities was one of them so there was a six different areas and in each area every the board members uh, had an opportunity to uh, recommend a number of uh, people to serve on each of those. Uh, I myself live in Grover and I recommended two people from the Burns area so uh, to serve on facilities because facilities has been a, a big issue uh, that has been brought to me for that in that area and the Crest area. So um, it was very very strategic that each each team uh, had about 25 to 30 on that and we tried to make sure that there was the same amount that served each zone and that team come together and uh, I know many that served on the facilities uh, I think Dr. Clinton may be trying to look that up but uh, what I'm telling you is that in the four zones each team had the same number whether it was Kings Mountain, Burns, Shelby, Press, they all had the same number. And that facilities team, it was number six, came back with a recommendation that 
North Shelby School, they looked at, if you've not visited North Shelby, it is the heart of our school system. Those children are absolutely precious. That that being addressed and the Burns and Crest Auditory and new wings at those schools be the, the, the focus of the, the, the top, the top priority. Now where the funding will come from, I can't tell you that. But our what that the community has given to us, and that meant no board members served on it, it was just brought to us on Monday night. That's what the recommendation was, was to build facilities in both of those zones that would match what is there. Now what they did the past five years was that they, they were able to achieve, I think, almost all of the first part of the goals uh, in that first area. Dr. Litton, am I right? So that being said, if the funding is there this year as it was for the new middle school, I would see that that would be the top goals from that from the community in a whole. Let's say, even Kings Mountain agrees that Burns and Crest deserve auditoriums. <coughs> so it would be hard as a board member not to go by what the recommend, recommendations was to, for that strategic plan, if, if that helps you. You know, because that's what we're going to go by is what that strategic plan, I, I don't know if uh, uh, our commissioner that I saw was here, but that's what we give to them and that's how they, you know, help us fund is what is recommended. And so those are the, those were the three priorities that they felt was important. So is that committee was made up of citizens appointed by board members? Board member. Yes. And uh, Dr. Linton, school, I asked, so, Schools could also recommend it. So that, yeah, go ahead, Dr. Lynn. I don't want to let Dr. Lynn also answer as well. Because <laughs> he may correct me if I'm wrong. How many were on the committee? Do you know? Each committee. The ones with the facilities that recommended the auditorium. I don't have that list with me. That's 25 to 30. Uh, they, uh, they met several times. They went around the county. They looked at different facilities. Uh, like like Ms. Paul said, we we didn't micromanage those groups. They went on their own. Yeah. And uh, now they were led by an administrator to make sure that Ten they they could go. Ten schools. Ten, Ten schools. Okay. And they they tried to say, now what is the greatest <coughs> need? What's the next greatest need? And uh, that phase one is North Shelby and then Crest and Burns Auditorium mm -hmm. and classrooms. We have the most mobile classrooms at Burns and Craig. That's where the most mobile classrooms are. Yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, is this the first time this has been done for those two schools, for Burns and Craig, or has this particular uh, study been done in the past? I can tell you before I retired as principal at Crest High School, we had a planning team to build an auditorium. So it's been going for a long time. Long time. And uh, But in the last strategic plan. It wasn't in the first phase. Okay? It was down below. It's now been moved up. I'd like to say something about the Burns and Chris. Dr. Litton already knows it. I probably served on the board more than any of them. I served on the board previously for 26 years. I have fought to get an auditorium at Burns and Chris as long as I've been on that board all right. Also, one of the things that I've also tried to do is to get air conditioning in the gymnasiums at Burns, Burns and Crest. My last term while I was on there, it got put on the list. It never moved up. It kept staying down, and it's still there. And Burns and Crest does not have an area where they can go to have a large uh, number of, of folks, parents and students, that is air conditioned. They still don't have They still don't have it. The only thing that they've got as far as fine arts to put on is the, is the auditorium, I mean the uh, gymnasium. There's a small auditorium in Burns and Bridge. That will not see many people at all. You can't get a group in there. It's very, very small. So the fine arts is very, very limited. This year, Burns High School has got 95 students in their band. Their band room was built back in 1967. Now, back in 1967, no one thought that Burns High School would ever have enough students interested in band. No one ever thought they'd have an interest in, in uh, uh, 
orchestra. The divine arts is coming alive. And even though it's been just a second, this thing has got to be done for these two schools. I agree with North Shelby. We've got to consider those children. But we've also got to consider these other two schools because we don't have that for both Crest and Burns High School. What about the middle schools? Do, do the, middle the middle schools, schools do not have it either? I mean, my son being a first year um, student at Crest Middle School, that concerns me, especially with my son actually having um, the seizure disorder who, who getting too hot could actually cause him to have a seizure. I had no idea they had no air condition at all in there. The auditorium in Burns uh, Middle School and Crest Middle School are the largest. They are air conditioned. The gymnasiums are not air conditioned. That was another request as far as and it's in that same list. Why is it that Crest and Burns are always at um, at the bottom, basically the totem pole against Kings Mountain or Shelby? I've had the same question. Mm -hmm. One of the things that has happened between that Burns and Crest were uh, left back was that whenever before the school systems merged, Kings Mountain and Shelby put a, had a tax to where they could build these things. Also, whenever the, the county system requested money, it didn't only go to the Burns and Crest district, or the county district, it also went to Kings Mountain and Shelby district. Well, so they, they were able to advance to where the county stayed back. See, with me coming from a larger county, from Wake County, coming here, not understanding at the time that the schools were separated, is that part, I mean, is that, could that be possibly why they don't, because they are, they were just now integrated together within the last, what, seven years, up to 11 years from the last? Yes, and I think that I've told you. I'm way past merger, okay? And, and I think that it's, uh, it's something that needs to Kings Mountain had a 23 cent <coughs> supplemental tax that their citizens paid. Shelby City is somebody here. I, I was thinking theirs was 20. 20. Shelby City paid 19 cent and the county's was zero. zero. So King and the citizens, I know of Kings Mountain and I think Shelby as well voted for that. So the, we Kings Mountain was getting more money. I mean, you're talking about 23 cent versus 10 cent for the for the Barnes Press zone. So Kings Mountain was using that money and building auditoriums or putting air conditioning in their units and swimming pools in their buildings and things like that with their funds. Because they were getting it, they were, the citizens were paying more money for it, but the county was not paying that tax. So there wasn't the funding there. So we haven't reached the level to make those equal. We're still working to try to recover those places that, the same as, there's been no more money spent in Kings Mountain or Shelby to make those schools better other than the middle school, which I think Shelby very much needed and, and those students deserve. But I don't understand why Shelby needed a new middle. I, I guess me personally, um, living close enough to the middle school, didn't. I don't understand why they needed a, a brand new middle school versus taking that money and, and diversing it out and doing some remodeling to all the schools versus giving it to one school. Let me I ask, can I answer one question? Let me go back to the reason there wasn't an auditorium in, or I feel that there wasn't an auditorium in the Crest and the Burn Zone. Because I don't want to answer the question. I mean, I'm not an expert. I am just a mother, y'all. That's all I am. But I can, I'm just looking at it from the other side. The reason there wasn't one there is because the funding wasn't there for the county to build auditoriums and put air conditioning in those units. Now, uh, the strategic plan for five years ago called for a new school. I, I'm going to let, I, I, that's, my, that's my insight on why they, there is not an auditorium. But it, the recommendation is that there should be one there and that there will be if the funds are there this time. And it is number one. I mean, it would be number one behind North Shelby as as far, and we did meet the goals of that first uh, area the last time. So they, they are at the top. If the funds are there, that's what will happen. Okay. Uh, I'd like to speak just for a minute. They, they said quite a bit here. Sounds like to me that plan needs to be changed a long time ago instead of them keep following the same plan. 
Uh, and then, if, these, if, if North Shelby is that bad, why did we spend eight mil, eight, nine million, nine million. eight uh, dollars on administration off here and not fix those poor yeah. precious kids? Exactly. Yeah. That's what they would be looking at. Quit spending on administration because twelve administrators is earning one million three hundred and six thousand seven hundred and eighty one dollars. Twelve of them. I got the facts from them, so it's not. <laughs> it came directly from them. One million three hundred and six thousand seven hundred and eighty one dollars for twelve people. Go down twelve mold, close to a million dollars to it. And as we go, eight point nine million approximately is what the paper says. The bid was fourteen million. So what was really speaking? I do know that there's some things was cut out from the contractor and the maintenance department now. I know about the maintenance department, I work there. And I think there are a few people in here can stand for what I did. I'm, I was responsible for all your third lanes at these schools. And I went to Raleigh on my own time, not when I was working in the maintenance department. I didn't quit at four o'clock. I raised money from Robbie. Ms. Debbie Clary, our senator, helped back this up in our legislature. I don't have a problem going to Raleigh. I talk to him three times a week, and I've been doing it for three years now, getting answers. I will go to Raleigh for you. If the teachers need it, whatever. But we do not need to be spending on administration buildings when we've got school if it sounds like it's about to fall apart. We've been needing auditoriums. They have needed it when I worked there. It's been on the list, and it kept getting pushed down. If we cut out some of this high price administration, we might get them in auditoriums. For an example, there are school over about Bethwell. When it rains, the water pours down through the hallway, and I've heard it, it, some of the children have to carry an extra pair of shoes to put on because they get their feet wet. I hear there are crack in the wall that you can stick your hand in. We should have left out some conference tables over here and done some repairs on the schoolhouse. Yes. We've got some others that, uh, that sound like the education. <laughs> but, uh, but when it comes to maintenance and spending y'all's money wisely, don't forget me because I'm standing for what's right. And the misuse of funds that was misused, why have we not got answers on all of those misuse of those credit cards that was passed down. Anybody want to call me? My number is 704-477-7188 and I will talk to anybody as long as you want to talk. But I'm not a public speaker. <laughs>
and the SDI has looked into 20 or 22 credit cards and the SDI turned over their findings July 11th, two and a half months ago, to our district attorney. He has had it on his desk two and a half months. I have phoned him to no avail, no return call. I have inquired, others have inquired. I understand the sheriff and house of representatives has inquired, and there is nothing that is being said. Now, if this one person who supposedly had $36,000 on it, you would think if, if the SBI turned in a, a report that said there was no reason to indict anybody, that they would be singing hallelujah to the media and exonerating these people so they could get this off their back. And you would think that they would be saying that too for the people of Cleveland County to get this cloud off of us. This cloud goes all the way from here to Raleigh because I've been in contact with the um, Attorney General's office myself on a number of occasions, SBI, and can't get anything from here. Now this is what I would like to see. I would like to see Rick Howell, because now the cloud is hanging at Rick Howell, excuse me, uh, Rick Schaefer, who is our um, district attorney. I would like to see him, since the cloud now is hanging over his head, because this is in his cloud. I would like to see him turn this over to the Attorney General's office for them to do something about it. Because now the cloud that's hanging over his head is, is in a conflict of interest within his office. Is that the reason that he's not doing anything about it? Because one of these people, the one that had charged those that un unauthorized charges, which according to the, uh, the SBI and according to the Attorney General, the $36,000. I question that because there was something in the school minutes, the administration minutes, that said $4,200 and it didn't pay back. I asked this specific question of the Attorney General's office this week and the report, excuse me, from the State Auditor's office this week. And the report I got back is they stood by this story that this unauthorized expenses that were charged by this one person was $36,000. So this person happens to be brother-in-law of the clerk of court. So this is the cloud that's hanging over the district attorney himself. Now, is, is this a conflict of interest? Is the reason he doesn't act on this? I don't know. But I, I would like to see him turn this over to the attorney general's office and to report what is in this findings, either to go ahead and clear everybody if there's nothing there that SBI has found, or to go ahead and indict or do whatever so we can get this off of us. No matter what the law says. Okay. Do you want to address that before? It has been investigated by the state auditor. And an outside of audit by Martin Stearns and Associates, an internal audit, and now an SBI investigation. We've never seen any SBI investigation. They Nobody us, has. They told us, stay out of it. We're investigating. Wow. Now, the state audit is on the internet. You can go, you can look at it, and it'll tell you what was misused and how much was paid back. Mm -hmm. And there are two people that no longer work for the Cleveland County <coughs> Schools that were involved in that. When we get information, we work with it. 
Now, we can't go on rumor. We can't go on what somebody thinks. If our district attorney has it and somebody has done something wrong, then let the chips fall where they may. So I will tell you that while I wasn't at the meetings, I was there on the ground with the kids. So um, I don't want that to be misconceived as the boy doesn't know about the Board of Education. Um, I have been working with our children. Well, the meetings on Monday and Tuesday is when we did, okay, I'm sorry, Monday and Tuesday is when we did the gospel choir, I'm sorry. Two nights, and then sometimes three. So it was on Monday and Tuesday. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said Tuesday, but we did two gospel choir rooms. And you can check that at Chris High School. <laughs> I have not attended them, but I have kept up with the minutes. Of, that's online. Uh, you can go into that website and you can see exactly what's taking place. So I have kept up with those minutes uh, of each board meeting. Each board meeting, I'm sorry. I'm the same, and uh, of course I've kept in touch with a lot of uh, different organizations around that, uh, that I go to and speak on it. I have two grandsons in Burns High School. I have one wife as a teacher, or a, a, a retired teacher, and she still does special teaching. I just, I've been there on several different occasions for different things. And just to sit in and listen to what's taking place. I've been to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not only have I been to all of them, I think it's very important that you realize that our school board visits a school on every school board Monday, we, we split and we go in and we meet with our children. And I, it's very, it's a, a very, uh, Dr. Litton actually uh, worked this, work, works this out, a schedule for us, and it allows us to get hands on. And I think it's important that you know whether the board members attend the meetings at the school or they don't, because that's when we know what's going on and what our schools do look like. You say you meet with the children. Do you actually ever meet with the staff members at the school? The uh, teachers and the um, their we, helpers. We do three things when we go. One, with the kids. We eat with the kids. Most of the time, they have designated tables. Two, we meet with the school improvement team. And we, as a board, we tell them, we're not there some time with the principal. We're glad to hear from the principal. We want to hear the three best things you do that you want to brag to the board about the most. And the three greatest needs your school has. What are you working on? What do you need? <coughs> then we look at focused programs. Uh, we're, we're out and about in the school but we want to see some focused program that that school has what's going on during that time. Uh, now, did you have a question that took pertains to this? It, it, it pertains to, you know, what, what I'm concerned about is, is, is schedule. Wait, if, if, if it's something else, Neil, let her uh, okay. ask her question. That's right. Oh, yeah. that's right. um, my question is just on English. My children are Lawrence Springs area, so I'm not for Chris or Shelby or Burns or Kings Mountain. I'm concerned. Having had a son that went through Crest High School and is a freshman at NC State, I'm concerned about the equity between the AP courses offered at Kings Mountain versus Crest. 
has burned. When is there going to be, or what are anybody going to do to make sure that there's equity among, you know, seven to ten offered at one and four offered in another? Okay. Uh, the biggest problem you have, um, straight block schedules at Crest and Burn. Okay. That started in 1995. Okay. Uh, at Kings Mountain, they have a modified block. Okay. At Shelby, they have a traditional six period day with a block put in it. So it's a modified traditional schedule. Uh, this is my personal opinion. Okay. I'm not speaking for the board. Okay. It's time to modify. I'm not saying Kings Mountain or Shelby has the only answer, but it's, it's time. Uh, to, to work with those a little bit. Uh, they probably have as great an offering at the four high schools, but they don't have as great an opportunity. And, and I find that when students are buying for scholarships, and our student from Cleveland County is in for a scholarship against someone from Wake County, and that student, they said, well, how did you take eight AP courses, and our student has five? This, it looks like it's an unlevel playing field. And I, I feel like all the students in Cleveland County <coughs> deserve, deserve the same playing field. As a board, we have not dictated to the individual schools how, how they do that sort of thing, but uh, uh, Isn't it time? they're working at it. Okay, Neil, you have a question. Yeah, just, just a quick comment, just a quick question. Uh, you know, scandal or even a human scandal is bad reaction to public confidence. And, you know, the one thing I almost all I have is good, solid public confidence in the school board and their school system. Do any of you, Mr. Parker, what do you have some strategies to avoid just the, even the hint of, uh, of some sort of scandal? I mean, how about online checks to go so everybody can see what's going on or publish the credit card information? I don't know. You comment, please. We made major major changes in, in the credit card. Went with a different company to where it, you could have better accountability, that sort of thing. Uh, why did we ever go with them to start with? It did save a great deal of money in terms of producing the purchase orders and all the paperwork. It came down to where it cost you to go out and, and make a simple purchase if you go through all the paperwork and all the time and that sort of thing, studies showed it cost you about $75 for that. It was much more efficient. Now, I don't know that you can ever say that you're not going to have somebody that doesn't do something that's not right. That can you make it more happen. transparent? Can you find a way to make it as visible as possible? Sunlight is a great disinfectant. Yeah. We have hired an internal auditor. Okay? This internal auditor, that's supposed to be the guy that ferrets out stuff like that. Now, whether or not we could put it all online, uh, I don't know. This happens in some governmental agencies now. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. You know, I hear all about this, about this uh, transparency, about the uh, you know, air conditioning money to be spent, and about the uh, people uh, abusing money. Uh, well, I was a postmaster, start at the top. It's not clear to me look at superintendents. You got this many problems. What's the superintendent looking at? And, and it's not we're paying him. What is he doing? Is, is he involved in these things? Is he looking at the employees he has? And, and, and it needs to start at the top. So it's not like to me it's just trickling down to the bottom and, and you want to get rid of some people at the bottom. We've got to look at the top. We really do. Dave, I kind of just wanted to make a, a comment, I guess. Uh, you talking about. I taught school for 33 years. I did not teach in Cleveland County. I taught in Gaston County, but I'm well aware that all school systems are very administrative heavy. And uh, I know in Gaston County, we had folks sitting over there pulling down <coughs> humongous salaries that were basically doing nothing. I was surprised, really surprised, you know, when all the stuff came out about the education budget coming out of Wally and all that kind of stuff. There was a thing that came out about the superintendents, what the superintendents in each school, each county system made. I was absolutely floored <coughs> at what the superintendent in Gatsby and uh, Cleveland County made. It is so far out of line 
with other school systems of similar sizes. Our superintendent makes, yes, less, but not a ton less than the Charlotte Mecklenburg superintendent. And look at the school, look at the number of schools Charlotte has. And we have 29. That really, that's surprising. Did you have something to say to that? No. Okay, no. all right. Dr. Yes, he makes a high salary. Okay, uh, he has 34 years of experience. He has an earned doctorate degree, and the state pays more for that. The first, the first report that came out was in gross error. I don't know if you ever saw the corrected. I don't know whether I did or not. And uh, it was published by a legislator from Asheville. And uh, I'm sure somebody here has the exact salary wow. that he makes.
In my opinion, being in computer business for 28 years, it took more effort to scramble this mess than it did to put it in alphabetical order. I'll say that. I'll stake my reputation on it. It took more effort not to put it in alphabetical order. Now, my question is, is this board and the commission board, what are they going to do about transparency with the template and template? She doesn't like everything goes on. 
But you try to cooperate and do the best you can. Now, I realize I'm probably not talking to the most friendly audience in the world tonight. <laughs> you know? But I also realize, uh, you know, I'm going to tell it to you just like I see it. Just like I think it is. Uh, I hope I'm right. I think you'd have to do it. Use the statement that he's in charge. First of all, he's not going to be in charge of me. He may be in charge of you. He's not going to be in charge of me. And I don't think he's going to be in charge of either person. The people are in charge of us, of us, of us. We, we answer to them. We don't answer to them. And if you get everything wrong, you need to look at what you need to do here. If that's a standard contract, maybe you don't need to go up the standard. Maybe you need to do the right thing. Okay. Mr. Grant, I, what group sponsored this meeting? Is, was it you and group. Is it just you did? That group. Okay. Um, sometimes okay. when you see things that people uh, you know, have questions, it's just a good idea, in my thinking, to bring them together and just kind of. Uh, uh, cool the um, air a little bit, just clear the air with, with it. We're going to have to close, and I'm sorry we won't do this because we have a news meeting here, and I think that um, the uh, Charlotte uh, TV station, WBTV, uh, Mr. Brady O'Connell, might like to ask some questions to somebody. Um, I certainly don't need to hold you guys. I know they're about to kick us out anyway, so go ahead. I'll get a hold of the people that I need to, but I appreciate your time tonight. I'm Okay, here, so, so in that case, if you have nobody that you want to speak to, there are a couple people on their way out. I can grab them. It's you know okay. I don't need to hold everybody out. So she's she's jumping into bit here to respond to probably what I just said about that. Now, I just wanted to make a final statement, and I'll just take thirty seconds of your time. Uh, I think Danny said it all. I want, I want you to know I didn't. I am just a, again. I'm just a mother. I'm not a public speaker. I'll be right quick. I graduated high school. I'm, I'm not one of these people up here with a college education. I graduated high school when I was just a mother. Okay. So, I'm not a public speaker either, so I hope I did okay. Dr. Lynn, hey, Ms. Chris Lynn, when you come over again, everybody has one time on the stage. And then I'll get to you. Please, if they do that, I'll get one. Thank you for the opportunity. I know everybody's ready to go home. Uh, I'm one of those parents that has to go home and take care of kids and do some homework. But I do appreciate you all coming out here. I do appreciate you all participating in this forum. And I wish our school system the best because we got to focus on the kids and we got to focus on making them leaders for tomorrow. Mr. Grant, thank you for this meeting. Thank you. 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 I want to say thank you all for your time. I especially want to thank my beautiful wife for being here with me tonight. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you all. I want to thank y'all for asking me to come. And I'm going to have a rally October the 8th at Challenger 3 Golf Course under that building right there. And we'll tell some more about what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm tired of the spending and it being taken away from our children. It needs to be put in that classroom first. Uh, well, the auditorium, I don't have a problem because if we quit spending on the uh, conference space, we can have a auditorium. I believe in family, I believe in community schools, we need to keep our schools in the communities as possible, and uh, I love everyone else and appreciate you. We want a round of applause for everybody.